question now is, but it's, uh, um, for you who are South African, yet you lived in Montreal for over 30 years, mm. ran successfully a, mm. a company, mm. a Canadian company, mm. but you were one of the first artistic directors to start putting new Canadian work on your stages. Yep. Why? Why in an early stage were you putting, say, the David Panarios? Because, ah, because I knew that the only way you can create your own identity is through new work. You can't create an identity through doing classical work unless you are of such a level of professionalism and expertise that you can imitate Stratford, you know, in its Peter Hall heydays, you know, or, uh, or the Moscow Arts Theatre doing its classical repertoire. If you have those sort of resources, yes, you can draw on a classical repertoire and establish an identity. But in almost every other respect, you establish your identity through the new work that you do. It defines who you are, where your passions lie, etc. So I knew that this was the case. And I, in the first year, I went to all the old writers in Montreal. I went to Leonard Cohen, Irving Leighton, uh, Mordechai Richler. And he got no plays for me. I remember going to Irving Leighton, and he got on the phone, and he to, to Leonard, who had just arrived from uh, the Greek Isles. He was in New York. And the conversation went something like, Hey, there's this guy, Morris, here. he's opened a theatre in, in Montreal. He, you remember that play we wrote together? And there was a pause, and his voice dropped. And he said, it, it wasn't that bad. And he put down the phone, and he said, uh, no, we don't know where that play is. And Nathan Cohen told me later, you were so lucky not to be encumbered by that play. Any of those writers... Do you remember the name of that play? No. Nah. So written by Irving Layton and... Uh, and Leonard Cohen. It was, it was done on the CBC, I believe. Or at least... Nathan Cohen read it. <laughs> he was a literary editor at the CBC at the time. I don't know if it was ever done. But, uh, and and uh, Mordechai Rishle had translated two plays by Isaac Babel, a great Jewish-Russian playwright, novelist, uh, for, the, for, for radio in BBC Radio. So I thought that would be an inkling, something he could want to follow up, but no. He said, I'm too old to, uh, to risk theatre or something to that effect. <laughs> it is an enormous risk, you know, yeah, theatre. So, uh, yeah, I had to find new writers. And how, I did was, you know, uh, how did you know to do that? How did you know that about identity? You can't make an identity unless you have a new work. How did you know that? I don't know. Isn't it obvious? I mean... But you were in a country that was doing nothing but, you know, Arthur Miller and Harold Pinter and Noel Coward. The whole well, country at the time well, was Montreal. basically doing other cultures' plays. Yeah. And it was the oddballs who came along, you know, the Paul Thompsons and the Martin Kinches and the, and the Morris Pottery's who said, well, you know, actually, we shouldn't do these big successful plays from Broadway and London and, and Paris. We should actually be doing some... And people said, what? An oddball little play about a country, about people who can't write and we yeah. don't have writers? And why are we doing that? What we could be doing here? Well, what helped a lot was that the County Council had a uh, program for, for the transference of plays across Canada, you know, for touring. Touring office, eh? Is that what they were called? The touring office. So we brought in a lot of plays from Newfoundland, from the prairies, and so on, to be part of our season. And that helped us. Were they good plays? Mmm. Cruel Tears from the Prairies. A prairie version of the Othello story. Marvellous. Absolutely. We brought in Codco, which taught us that Newfoundlanders are the funniest people in Canada. Not to be sneezed at. They still are. Ah. And so on. We were very well served by that uh, touring office. And then we found these new writers. Yeah, we found them. David Fenario and so on. Uh, the opening night of David's first play on the job, we, I heard that sound in the theatre that I'd only heard at the Forum, Hockey Nights in Canada, when the audience just exploded, exploded. And I heard that sound in the theatre on the opening night of David's play. And the guy standing, was sitting in front of David, got up and started cheering. And he turned to his wife and said, what am I cheering for? I'm a boss. <laughs> This is on the job. On the job, yeah. Yeah, on the job. There was a marvellous man. What were, what were they cheering for? They were cheering, for, I don't know, they were cheering in recognition, and a great story, 
uh, cheering at the, 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 yeah, the identification of themselves with this play about themselves, about Montreal. It was a revelation to them and, and they rose to the, to the moment. It was a great celebration that night. Marvelous, marvelous night in the theater. Now, in Montreal, you were on two sort of balance beams, it seems to me. You were on the English-French balance beam. You know, which way does it go? And uh, that was a big, big issue for me, all through my career. Because the French theater was developing this imagistic concept of theater, not text-based, but director and designer-driven. And that's not me. I, I'm, I'm a, in the beginning as the word. I think that the Old Testament sort of... Was copied me. The Old Testament copied me in that respect. The, uh, the word is still there. Now I believe in the playwright. I believe in the, and as the engine of, of vision, not the director. A director is a magician who, who can yes, who can who can entrench, enchant you once, twice, three times, but then will run dry. And I think most of the examples prove that. Uh, but it is a playwright who has the, the skill and the training and the imagination to, to dig into that level of psychology and understanding and myth and so on to, 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 to support a production, a play. So we need playwrights. Um, anyway, is so... True, is this true, Morris, in that the, the, the artists of longevity who've come out of Quebec will be the Robert Lepages. They will not be the David Fenerios, mm. uh, however much I like David Fenerios. That the writers have not come through the theater, but those artists ah. who are currently for 30 years again are well, imagistic and directed. So we're having a talk about Lepage now, are we? Well, it's part of the English French. Is All the right. word text based? All right. Is it director vision based? All right. Lepage came in at a moment when European theater also went into imagery based theater, what we call Euro trash. This is which, early 70s. Uh, yeah, 60s, 70s, it started to develop that. I, I, it's anathema to me. They take great texts, they rewrite them in terms of the personal vision of the director. It is shallow, it is sensational, it is offensive often. Uh, it has no depth, and no and dur but it, it captured the imagination of Europe because... Well, on the other hand, Morris, I go and see Gilles Mailleux and I go and see uh, Paul Chérios, Yeah. Uh, and uh, I remember pieces from that. Absolutely. Piece, Absolutely. And I received yeah. something about what yeah. a man means to be a man and a woman that yeah. I had not seen expressed in Shaw yeah. or Shakespeare or anything. And I yeah. remember those images and what they meant to me emotionally yeah. and yeah. what they meant to me, you know, upstairs in my philosophy. Yeah. You know, I think we had a cauldron of creativity in Quebec that was astonishing. But I don't think, I don't think it's for the long haul. I don't think it's... Uh, uh, what we should grow on. It's a personal taste thing too, I guess. Uh, I'm prepared to do the tremblés because they are based, but there was a problem there as well. We actually did do two tremblés, but for the first five years, tremblé wouldn't let us do plays in English until, Ke Tremblay, yeah, until Quebec was independent. And then when the Levesque government came in, he said, okay, now you can do my plays. And we actually did two of his plays, but I finally agreed with him that in Montreal, you should see his plays in French. To try and imitate in Montreal, his creation is asking for, 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 for deep, for, for, for criticism. For, uh, you, can, you can sell that vision in Toronto, you can sell it in Vancouver of English speaking actors recreating uh, French Canadian life, but you can't in Montreal. They know the difference. And uh, so I thought, yeah, you're right. You do them in French. So I stopped doing French-Canadian plays and translation. You can see them in French, see them much better done there. And why are we still text-based in English theatre? Well, it's it, because I think that's the way to go. I, think, I, I don't think we should be 100% text-based. I think we should absorb the energies and the excitement and talent that, that movement-based theater and, and uh, design-based theater can, can add to the color, to the notions, to the excitement of theater. We should absorb all of that and use it. And I think in South Africa, we have some of that marvelous coalescence, which is great. 
but it's still finely driven by the, the writer. Yeah, yeah. I have, I managed to have working at Centaur, um, Sasha Moran, a Russian director, came over from Moscow with his family, settled in Montreal. And he brought an extraordinary vision of Russian theatre to the Centaur. And I loved it all. It, it, it embraced opera, it embraced physical theatre, it embraced everything. But he had the discipline to serve the play. He wasn't wanking off, wasn't doing his own thing at the expense of the play. And that's where I draw the line, and that's why I'm not a great fan of Lepage's work now.